All right, so I'm going to be showing you how to open up and disassemble this HP laptop model 14-DK0002DX. Right, so this laptop, the customer said it's just booting to a black screen. I'm hoping it's going to be a RAM issue, but uh, we'll find out. All right, so let's go ahead and start by removing these rubber feet. So I just use my fingernail. You can use a flathead screwdriver or whatever works for you, okay? Make sure that you are lifting up the rubber, or sorry, the adhesive as well. And it looks like in this case, the adhesive just comes up with it. So no big deal, all right? If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Right, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Other than that, let's go ahead and start removing the screws. We're going to be using a J1, JIS1, or PH1, whatever screwdriver you want, and we're going to remove these. Uh, whatever screwdriver actually works best. If you have, uh, It's best to have a kit with all the different bits, and then just make sure, like, find one that when you have it in the screw, it doesn't wiggle around when you have it in, all right? So let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and pop the bottom cover off. Again, hopefully um, it's just a RAM issue, but we'll see. Okay, so we're getting all these screws out. The two um, at the front here where the laptop opens are like a kind of grayish color, not as like silver or chrome colored. So just in case you accidentally mix them up, these three back here and this one are the same color. All right, anyways, now that we got all the screws out, we're gonna carefully open this. Usually on these HP ones, I'm gonna have to start from the side. So we're gonna go from here. Okay, I get my fingernails on the side edge here. And then what I do is I push with my thumb on the back and hopefully we can pop the cover up. So let me kind of hold it this way so it's easier. So I'll go like that and you can see the cover pops. All right, we're gonna go to the other side and do the same thing. So get my fingernails in there and then I'll push with my thumb on the back and you can see it's, or you can hear it's popping, all right? Then we're gonna work our way around to the front and see if we can pop that, and there we go. All right, so now you can see we have the whole front and sides popped up. We're gonna now work our way up towards the back. I like to hold the um, kind of hinge area down here, and then while I'm holding the inside of this case, I'm gonna kind of wiggle it side to side and pull up slowly, and there you go. Okay, so there's the bottom cover removed not bad all right so here's the inside of the laptop we're gonna get a thumbnail here so let me get this lined up okay the battery access is CMOS BIOS excuse me RTC real-time clock battery so if you remove the battery keep in mind it's gonna reset the BIOS um, and the battery model number is HT 3 XL that's a very common uh, HP battery number right now we're going to pull these two tabs aside. The RAM pops up. We can pull this out. All right. And hopefully it's a RAM issue. This is the RAM here. PC4-2666V. Oops. Come on. Come on. Focus. There you go. PC4-2666V. It's 4 gig. All right. Not really much RAM, but let's go ahead and get that back in. So we get it in at an angle. I like to wiggle it as I push and then click it down. All right. Let's see what happens if we try and power it on right now. Uh, is the battery completely dead on here? The customer said it was powering on, but doesn't seem like it is. Let me go grab the charger and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. We got the charger. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Let's see. All right, I see the charge light on. It turned orange. Let's try pushing the power button now. Okay, I saw the light. It's kind of, or the screen's kind of flashing and you see it's just showing this black color not really much else so nothing is coming on the screen usually that's not going to be a RAM issue so huh it could possibly be a display issue I do see this light flashing on the side here see that that light what does that refer to that's 
It's a hard drive light, right? Huh. But it's weird because it's flashing at a steady rate. Normally, if it's reading the hard drive or something, it should be doing like random flashing. So I'm going to turn this off. Let's try pulling the SSD out. This is an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. That one screw here. I'm going to undo that screw. You can see it pops up by itself, and then we can kind of wiggle and pull that out. All right, let's go ahead and power it up again, see what happens if there's any change. Screen is doing the flashing thing again. It's off, and then it's lit up. And here we go. We have system diagnostic hard disk issue. So very likely this SSD is dead. Uh, we're going to turn this off again. Carefully close this. Let's put the SSD back in. Okay, I'm going to get the screw back down and see what happens. Alright, so now that we've got that in, let's go ahead and power it back up and see if anything happens here. Also, if you're wondering, I have a lot of these HP laptops where I actually pull that battery out. So if you're not sure how to pull that battery out and you need a video, let me know. I can send you a video of that. And as you can see, it's just flashing again. I'll actually pull the SSD out and then I'll test it externally on another computer. But I'm pretty sure that SSD is dead. Uh, I'm going to have to let the customer know. And then we'll have to decide if they find it worth it or not. This laptop is very low end, only 4 gigs RAM. So I'm kind of doubting they're going to feel it's worth the cost to replace the drive because the SSDs I have are like one terabyte, much more expensive than whatever they had before. Also, the prices of SSDs went up recently for some reason. Um, a four, like a one terabyte, I think was around 50, 60 bucks a little while ago last year. And now for some reason, they're like around 70 bucks. I don't know why. But uh, anyways, I'm going to pull the battery out here just to show you. So three screws. Uh, there and then we got one screw down here Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and carefully pull it up from here There you go, and that's what the battery looks like when it comes out It just has these little tabs that it kind of slides over you can see the touchpad has a connector here going to the buttons And then from the buttons it goes up to the motherboard. All right Let's do a quick look at everything else. You got the keyboard connector here with the flip latch. Some models have a keyboard backlight, so there's this little connector here, but this keyboard doesn't have that. Uh, speaker connector is right here, has wings. You can wiggle and pull it out, um, and that speaker connects to this speaker there. Okay, you got the DC jack uh, charge port connector plugged in right there, which goes underneath the hinge. You got to remove all these hinge screws and then flip the hinge out of the way if you need to replace that. There's the LCD LVDS connector right here. If you're going to mess with this after disconnecting the power and the battery, you want to open the laptop and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds before you even flip this latch. Otherwise, there's a very good chance you'll fry the connector here, you'll fry this cable, you'll fry the backlight circuit here, you'll fry your screen. There's a lot of like risk to doing that, all right? So be very careful. Make sure you do the battery drain. You got the CPU underneath here, soldered to the motherboard. This is the heat sink, which pulls the heat all the way to here. Fan blows air through there by pulling air through the bottom. Uh, you got one wireless antenna going into the screen, comes down, and then plugs into the wireless card here. Okay, and then you got the fan connector right there with also that winged connection where you just grab the wings and you kind of just wiggle it and pull it out. All right, you got this cable going from the motherboard to here for the USB-C port and the uh, SD card slot. Um, so that's kind of nice. If you accidentally break the USB-C port or the SD card slot, then you can replace this board separately. All right, and I think that's all there is inside here. I'm going to have to see what the customer wants to do in terms of fixing this thing. Uh, let me zoom in so I can show you putting the battery back. Uh, it's relatively simple. Basically, just line up the bottom. There's the raised tab or raised little hole there. Um, so you get that lined up, and then you line up this side, you just lower it down, line up these screw mounts, and then push it down. I like to also pinch like this to kind of make sure the battery goes up in place. That's kind of weird that it's squishy there, so I pulled over here as well. Okay, and now we're going to just get these screws back in. And then I'm going to let the customer know their SSD is bad. I'm going to actually, again, um, test it with another, uh, with another computer with a USB adapter and see if it's dead on there as well. But most likely, because it's just flashing like that, the SSD is completely toast. Um, but yeah, let me go do that real quick, and then I'll be back. All right, 
So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so the drive is definitely completely dead. So we're just gonna put it back in. We'll see what the customer wants to do if they're willing to spend to repair this um, cheap computer or not. Um, but yeah, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and put this back in. Okay, and we're just gonna get the screw back and put that all back together. Oops, I already put the screw in there. Let me take that back out. But yeah, right now, SSDs, apparently they're having a shortage and the prices went way up. Um, and also, they don't have fast shipping anymore like they used to. So, I don't know what's going on, but uh, yeah, anyways, let's get this thing back on. So, line it back up. Pretty simple, straightforward. Okay, make sure it's not getting caught on anything. Don't try and force it on and then damage things. I think the headphone jack kind of sticks out a little. So actually, let's start with the headphone jack side. And then we'll work our way down over to this side. Yeah, all right. There we go. We'll work our way around. Make sure everything snaps in. You'll want to check here. Make sure everything is snapped in. Okay, looks good. All right, there we go everything is good we're just going to put all the screws back in put the rubber feet back on and that's pretty much it so if you wanted to reinstall windows um or if your drive is dead or you want to upgrade i do have videos showing how you can clone your ssd to another to um get a larger storage capacity because this one's very small only 128 gigs um but if your drive is dead you'd basically have to replace that and then you need to make a windows usb installer when you plug the USB in, um, well, you create the installer with another computer, you run Microsoft's tool to create it. Um, and then basically, when you plug it in and turn on this computer, press F9 on boot, just keep pressing F9, it'll go to the boot menu, you can boot from the USB drive, and then you should be able to reinstall Windows. All right, anyways, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you out. Again, if it did, like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. Also, I like to line this back up. You can see there's the little indent of the circle here. So I wanna make sure it's like that and not flipped over, all right? Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their device as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Again, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Other than that, you're welcome to stay as I get the last little rubber foot in. Um, and if you noticed, I put one side in first, then I will go over to the other side. I don't um, stick all that down and then I'll get that in and then I'll work my way in towards the center. The reason why I do that is usually this rubber will stretch a bit. And if you try and go all the way this way, you're going to end up with a bunch of extra rubber sticking out here. All right. So that's pretty much it. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.